Hello again, and for those uh, who are returning, welcome back, and I finally made it back out into the mountains here, and I am going to be taking you guys to an interesting uh, place, so let's uh, get on with it. Well, it's finally spring. There's snowstorms moving in and out right now, and it's really nice actually um, being up here in these kind of conditions, I think. Um, when the sun comes out, it can just be a little too warm for coming up here. And the snow kind of gives a nice different effect and feeling. Just about there, and where I'm taking you is a some kind of fracture or ravine. Um, there's multiple of one, but I'm taking you to the largest one. And we're just about there, so. There's a mountain here, and it uh, opens up into a big valley. There's more mountain boy across the uh, valley over there. So. As I mentioned before, in this valley here is a fault line. It's a big detachment fault and normal fault system. It goes, uh, cuts, that's why the, the valley's here. And the mountain I'm walking on right now, this side of it, um, is basically the foot, the foot wall of the fault line. And we're pretty much here now. Okay, so there's the valley here. There's the mountains. In the middle of this valley, there's a fault line. And it splits in two down there. And it kind of spreads out that way and this way. Um, you can see the rock over here from the mountain. It's kind of this this side of the mountain is very interesting. And here's what I wanted to show you. One part of it. I got to be careful here. You don't want to be falling. This is where the fracture zone begins. Yeah, this side of the mountain has many fractures. This one's far, uh, by far the largest, and this isn't even the biggest part of it yet. But there are very large fractures on this side of the mountain. And like I said, there's a fault out there. And this mountain slopes like this, as you can probably tell a little bit. Um, the mountain here was the foot wall of the fault, and at one time the fault was up here, and then after maybe millions of years of faulting and erosion, Eventually, the mount, this mountain was exposed to where it's at now. And the fault is currently uh, out there buried underneath uh, hundreds of meters of sediment from glaciers and glacier outburst floods. And those mountains way over there are sedimentary mountains. And um, they were pushed over that direction by the faulting. It was an extensional faulting, so this place, if you can imagine, was being stretched. And uh, this, all those sedimentary mountains used to be basically where I am now, burying mountains like this and the ones over there, which is part of the uh, core complex system here. And due to the extension and faulting, those mountains were basically pushed aside as these mountains and the lower basement and lower crust and upper mantle were rising up and it basically pushed all these mountains out of the way uh, with the uh, faulting that's been happening here. Here you can kind of see how the mountain slopes down and this is basically the eroded foot wall side of the mountain from the faulting. So at one time there was a slab of rock here on top of the basically this side of the mountain and as it faulted it was sliding down until eventually with faulting erosion it exposed mountain here and you can kind of see where it was. Oh, you can finally see it. This is where it is, the biggest part of the fracture zone. You can kind of see the lip of it right there. Let's take a closer look. Now I'm not going to get too close to this because uh, the ground's moss and it's really soft right now because of all the water and it's made mud on top of the rock so it can slip out from underneath me pretty easily right now. So I'll get as close as I can that's comfortable. Oh, this is a nice little spire here, actually. Here we are. It's very interesting, I think. Very large fracture. See the one side of it to the other. There's a couple more down there, but they're not near the size of this one. This is one's, uh, the biggest biggest one on the mountain right here. And it goes down quite a, quite a ways. There's some giant rocks down there. And right about here, or somewhere right in here, I believe, or it might be over that way, um, it splits in two, and so it gets divided into two different fractures, and one goes up that way, and there's another one just on the other side of this rock lip here. I 
I'd hate to drop the camera. It's just where I was just standing. You can see there's some solid rock area for me to stand on. Where I won't stand is on this moss right here. See, it um, goes right to the edge here, and it could just slip out with me on top of it. That wouldn't be good here. It's a bit windy up here, so I can hope you can hear me. See where this thing's getting ready to come on down and slide down there and join the rest of the rocks that fell down. Right there, too. I wouldn't want to stand right there. It's ready to go. This water looks pretty good right now. Looks like good drinking water, but I wouldn't drink it myself. Alrighty, so. Just on the uh, edge of the fracture here, there's actually a little waterfall area that I'm trying to get to where this, this water here is falling down into the fracture. So I'll see if I can get over there. Oh, here's where the water's flowing. It flows right down here and you'll notice the uh, I got a rock wall right here. Um, it's kind of interesting. There's multiple like little small fracture areas. Some are bigger than others. But the water flows just this way. And it flows down right into this little chute. Right in between those two rocks here. See that? Water flows right in between this crack and these two rocks. It flows out down there somewhere. What's interesting over here on this side, you can see it's, it's right here, it drops off down there, and it starts down. So there's quite a drop in land right here. This part's higher up, uh, and that part's much lower on this side. So um, that almost kind of looks like some kind of uh, drop off, kind of like a faulting area. This part's higher, and this kind of like sub subsided down lower. But on the same fracture just over here, it's as if this side just um, got pulled away from this side. It's almost um, level with the other side, if you get what I'm saying here. Snowing over there. And if you ever slip and fall, there's always plants nearby to grab onto to uh, stop yourself. Big, uh, I'm on a big crack that's ready to go. There's other cracks that are not easy to see that are forming just above the fracture zone here. You can kind of see. When you look at it from, uh, from the air, it looks like a giant tear in the side of the mountain. And that these fractures and cracks actually extend from one side of the mountain to the other and where they disappear underneath the uh, sediment, so they are quite large indeed. And the uh, big fault line is just right out here in this valley out here. So um, it could be related to that possibly as well. And I mentioned earlier that there was uh, glacier activity and glacier outburst floods that came through here. Um, however, I don't think that fr this fracture here was uh, caused by those alone. Um, I don't even know how old this fracture is, which would help determine um, how it formed. One possibility that it could be is I think it's called something called a shovel faulting. So down below, well actually up above, um, it begins to break away and tear and it slides. So the middle section is sliding off the mountain and as it slides down, it, put, it shovels back up, kind of like the shape of a shovel and it pushes uh, the front end up while the back end slides down. If, so I'll show you an example. So if this is shovel faulting, if you think of the shape of a shovel, you know, it has a bit of a curve. So if this is some kind of form of shovel faulting, if, if that's what it's even called, uh, this part is the part that bricks away and slides down. So this section here is sliding down um, of this side of the fracture. And as it slides down, it curls back up and it pushes the land uh, back up. So this part would be normal faulting, and on the other end it would be uh, basically thrust or reverse faulting as the ground is getting pushed up. And as you can see over here, if I zoom in, you can see 
how it slides down, kind of down that way, and then it gets the, the uh, part of the mountain rises back up over here. Can you see that? How it kind of rises back up. So it falls down here, this fracture forms, this slides away, slides down, and it gets come, kind of rounds back up, and it pushes up over there. So it could be, most likely, I think it's some form of faulting, and maybe it's just the rock sliding due to gravity instead of tectonic forces, but that's still going to cause friction on the rock and some kind of um, seismic activity when it moves. So it could just be shovel faulting. Or, since it does extend from one side of the mountain to the other, it could be related maybe to the big fault that's down in the valley over here. And as I mentioned before, you can see how the land is pushed up over there, this part of the mountain, all over the place, it's kind of hilly down on that section. Well, if you look way out here, I'll try to zoom in, you see that? That is uh, more bedrock that's over that way. And some of it is actually, a couple of it's mostly basalt, uh, basalt lava from ancient uh, volcanic activity um, about 21 million years ago. But over there, there's um, sedimentary rock just over there that's poking out through the uh, glacial sediments and flood deposits. So possibly underneath all of this sediment buried is more of uh, the hilly area. It could be related to the big fault, but who knows. Here's the, uh, n the uh, nice orthonice here. There's a little vein of something. Or it could just be a layer in the rock. And there's a hard layer here that's sticking out. You can see it's like a little spine of uh, feldspars. And if you look closely, you can kind of uh, see the lines and foliation kind of and pointing to the direction where the shear zone um, faulting was happening. I'm going to start to pick up a little bit. So uh, this will do it for today. I hope to see you all next time. And I hope you're all having a good day. And hopefully you're having beautiful weather where you're at. So take care, everyone.